Parshas Vayeshlach is filled with much drama and action, at least until you come to the middle of Shishi. Suddenly Perek Lamed Vav begins, and instead of the exciting stories about Yaakov meeting and preparing together to meet Esav, the fighting that takes place with the Saro Shal Esav in the middle of the night, the story with Dina and Shechem and Shimon and Levi, there is suddenly a very, very long list of names. And more troubling than just why is it significant that there's a long list of names is that the Torah does not repeat words. And yet, no less than four times, in slightly different formulations, does the Torah say, Esav hu avi Edom, that Esav is the father of Edom. It's listing off the generations, but it keeps repeating and summarizing, Esav is the progenitor, is the one who uh, le- led and, and, and from whom all of these people emerged. At the beginning, I understand that that's needed as an introduction, perhaps even at the end as a conclusion. But why is it rehashed? Why is it repeated so many times. I once saw a fascinating insight from Rabbi Lam Zechon Levracha. I want to share it and elaborate upon it. Why was it that Esav was called Esav? The Torah tells us why Yaakov was called Yaakov. He held on to the heel. But for Esav, the Torah does not give a reason. But the Mepharshim, based on the description that the Torah gives for Esav, explained his name. Esav was born Kulo Ke'aderes Seyar, completely covered in hair. Rashi indicates that was a way of look, he, he looked mature already. He looked like he was already of several years. He was already fully grown in a certain sense from birth. Explains the Rashbam that was the meaning of his name. Adam Asui Vinigmar. He was like somebody who was complete already. A baby normally is born and still has to develop. But Esav, he was complete. He was completely mature on a certain level in terms of physicality. What's the derivation of the name Edom? Halitani, no, please give me min hadom hadom azeh. Esav comes back and he's hungry and he's asking Yaakov to please give him from the soup that he had made. Esav didn't go through the process of taking the ingredients and cooking them and putting them together. He needed the finished product. Give me hadom hadom azeh. Give me the, the same thing that is nigmar, that is complete, that is asui, that is already made. And in that sense, Esav and Edom come from that same shorash, that same root of this idea, this ideology that they represent of being complete and static. There's no longer any need to improve. There is no longer any need to grow. Yaakov, on the other hand, comes second and he's holding onto the heel of Esau. That is his name. But more than that is that Yaakov lives through a life and it's indicated already at that point but line of constant struggle. Where does struggle come from? Struggle comes from when you're trying to grow and you're trying to become more. And the biggest struggle that we see from Yaakov is his battle in the middle of the night with the Malach. And now it's so beautiful. The Torah tells us that when Yaakov is victorious, what does he gain? A new name, Yisrael. Esau is always the same, but Yaakov, who's fighting, looking to grow, he even gets himself another name. At an elderly age, he could still become so much more. The, the, the difference, the contrast between the Zaro Shel Yaakov and the Zaro Shel Esau, the descendants of Yaakov, and the descendants of Esau is very, very stark. And it is basically summarized in one phrase. Esau hu avi Adom. That Esau is that progenitor of Edom. It is that mindset that these generations, they're, they're not looking to grow. They're not looking to do anything. They're not looking to struggle. They're not looking to be able to attain they're satisfied with where they are. And that's the difference. And that's what the Torah is highlighting by, my, by mentioning it multiple times. It's not just a reality, but it is a definition of who they are. And that's the difference. As Zaro Shal Yaakov, as the Bnei Yisrael, our responsibility is to always look to what else can I do? How can I grow? What more can I accomplish? How can I push myself just a little bit more? And when we push ourselves in some way, a little bit more today and a little bit more tomorrow, then the end, those little steps add up to quite a lot. And they help us be able to develop. And that's perhaps what the Torah is highlighting. It's not just a list of names, but it's a difference between Zaro Shalesov and Zaro Sheakov. We are privileged to be from the Zaro Sheakov, the Zaro of Yisrael, the one who's willing to battle, the one who's willing to fight, willing to engage in physical war if necessary, and in spiritual war to be able to grow and to be able to establish and to be able to move ourselves 
closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in our constant pursuit of that which is right, of that which is just, and that which brings the real tikkun to the olam, that brings the, the machus of Hashem into the world to be able to complete the world, so that vayom bayo mahu, when those moshiim come, bahar tzion nishpot es harisav, vayom hahu yeh Hashem echad ushmo echad.